Adventures in Research. This is Paul Shannon introducing another in a series of programs dealing with the thrilling adventures to be found in the field of scientific research, as told by the men of science themselves. Today's story by Dr. Phillips Thomas, research engineer of the Westinghouse Research Laboratories, is a dramatic one indeed, a story of heroism and courage, undaunted by personal misfortune, of a man who brought light to others even though he himself lived many years in darkness. The story of Gustav Dahlin. Now, perhaps the name Gustav Dahlin is not familiar to you. Doesn't strike a responsive chord in your memory. But over in Sweden, it's a name that is honored and revered. For Gustav Dahlin was a very famous Swedish inventor, a great man, and what's more, a great humanitarian. To tell his story, we're going back to the town where Gustav Dahlin was born, a place called Stenstorp in southern Sweden. It is the year 1891, and a wedding party is in progress. <laughs> it certainly makes a man feel he's really getting old, Ben. Just seems like a couple of days ago that Gustav Dahlin was just a boy. Here he is, 22 year old already, getting married. <laughs> they, they shoot up fast when they start, don't they? Yeah. Now, his wife, Elma Pearson, that was, and she was only a little mite of a thing not so long ago. Now she's Mrs. Darling. <laughs> <laughs> and she's taken on quite a job, if you ask me. He'll have her house upset all the time with those crazy inventions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, those crazy inventions. Did you ever see the contraption he built when he was only about 11 years old? Oh, what, what was it like? <laughs> it was a mechanical device, a, a clock, connected with a queer-looking contraption, built it all by himself, mind you, and it worked automatically. At a certain time, it shut the window, lit the burner under the coffee pot, and then, 15 minutes later, woke him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds just like Gustav and his invention. Always trying to save work for himself and for everyone else, too, of course. <laughs> Here they come, everybody! Five happy, adventurous years followed. For Gustav Dahlin, they were years filled with study and hard work in his chosen field, engineering and physics. In 1896, he was graduated from the Chalmers Polytechnic as a civil engineer, spent another year completing his studies at Zurich, and then returned home. Welcome home, Mr. Engineer. Oh, it's good to have you back in Stenstorff. How do you feel now that your studies are completed? Oh, I feel fine, Elma. And ready to go to work. I have a number of things to do. Plans for some new work-saving devices. I have them on paper now, and I want to get them into a workable model form. All right, Gustav. I'll keep the children out of your way as much as I possibly can. As I remember, you're a pretty dangerous person to be near when you're experimenting. <laughs> no, children. Nobody is shooting off any cannons. That's just your father experimenting. You didn't get a wink of sleep last night, and neither did I, and neither did the children. You shouldn't work all night like that, Gustav. It isn't good for you. Are you hurt? No, I'm all right, Elma. It's all right. Nothing to worry about. 
Oh, Gustav, you almost blow the whole house down, break two windows, and then say it's nothing to worry about. No. No, I wonder what went wrong with that little experiment. Well, only one thing to do. Try it again. Yes, Elma, I promise. I'll be more careful. It's finished, Elma, and been accepted. My hot air turbine. You mean to say that machine is for milking cows? <laughs> That's right. A great work saver, don't you think? It's an apparatus for pasteurizing milk, Elma. I don't know how you invent all these different things, Gustav. I think it's wonderful. I'm very proud of you. And you're getting to be quite famous. Did you know that? Yes, Gustav Dahlin, at 37, was becoming quite famous as an inventor. The year 1906 found him occupying the important post of chief engineer of the Gas Accumulator Company, which was then exploiting in Sweden the French invention of dissolved acetylene. Three years later, 1909, saw him appointed as managing director of the company. One night, he arrived home. Gustav, you look tired. I am tired, Elma. Look, it's a beautiful night. Let's sneak away and go for a sail. Oh, that's a grand idea. We haven't been sailing for a long time. You've been so busy. I'll be ready in practically no time at all. Ah, here's where a man can think. Out on the water like this. So restful. Yes, it's a wonderful night, this stuff. So dark and mysterious. You can almost feel the blackness. Soft as black velvet. Soft as black velvet. But there's danger in that blackness, Elma. Another boat was dashed to pieces the other night just because eyes were unable to pierce that black velvet. I know. It's horrible to think of men being killed on those jagged rocks and no way of warning them that the rocks are there. We should have more lighthouses. Yes, we do need more lights to warn the people of the rocks. But then you'd need more men to look after them, to turn the lights on at night and turn them off in the morning. That would cost a lot of money, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. More than the country can afford. You know, Elma, somebody ought to figure a way to make those lighthouse lights turn off and on automatically, by themselves. Well, why don't you try it? According to Sven, you used to figure out all kinds of crazy contraptions when you were a boy. Surely you could figure out something for a job like that. Elma, you're wonderful. That's a wonderful idea. I'll go to work on it right away. Well, I see where our director has invented a new lighthouse lamp. They say it's quite a big success. That's what I heard. How does it work? Uh, it's an automatic switch. The lamp operates on acetylene gas. It gives a fine, brilliant light. A beacon that can be seen for miles. Mm -hmm. Wonderful how simple it works, too. Has a device something like an oven thermometer which contracts as it cools, and that opens the gas valve, and the light comes on. <laughs> Sounds simple. How does it turn off, though? Well, the process is reversed. As the morning sun warms the metal, the metal expands and closes the valve, shuts off the light. Oh, I wish I had a brain that could figure out things like that. Oh, me too. But there's only one thing wrong with this newfangled way of turning lighthouse beacons on and off. Oh, what's that? Well, this acetylene's too dangerous to handle. It's not safe. Why, all you have to do is look at it and it explodes. Hmm. But there must be a way to make acetylene safe for men to handle it. There must be a way. I must find it. Elma, I found it at last. I've found a way to make a settling safe to handle. The answer is here in this clay. 
Absorb the gas by means of this clay. That's the way to do it. Don't look for me the rest of the day, Elma. What are you going to do? I've made arrangements to take this tank of acetylene out the country and try a little experiment. All right, Gustav. But please be careful. Oh, I will, Elma. I'll be careful. Don't worry. <laughs> That's a good fire. Now stand back, everyone. I don't want anyone to get hurt if there should be an explosion. I don't think there will be, but one never knows with this acetylene. Do you want me to put the tank in the fire, Mr. Darwin? No, I just want you all to stand back. I'll put the tank in the fire. There. Looks like, it looks like the tank's going to hold, Mr. Darwin. Perfect. That clay you use must be powerful stuff. Yes. I think we found the answer to the safety problem on acetylene gas. Certainly this experiment we've just been through tells the story, don't you think? A tank of acetylene set right on top of a roaring fire? Nobody could ask for a better test than that. Good. Then I'll get the tank. We'll go back into the flat and report on it. Oh! 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 Mr. Dolan, your clothes are on fire. Help me beat out the flames, Axel. Quick, hurry. Are you all right, Mr. Dolan? <laughs> Is, oh, is anyone hurt? No, we're both all right. Oh, that is good. I'm glad. Easy oh. now, Axel. We must get him to a hospital oh. right away. Be as quiet as you can, Mr. Dollar. Oh. Tell me, Doctor, is there any, any... Danger? No, Mrs. Dollar. Your husband was severely burned, but is recovering nicely. The shock was great, of course, but he will be up and about in a few weeks. You're keeping something back, Doctor. What is it? Uh, Mrs. Dolan, your husband's recovery is a matter of time. But the explosion has destroyed his sight completely. He will never see again. <laughs> Mr. Dolan, your invention is a success. Yes, all kinds of tests have been made, and your method of making acetylene beacon safe is a complete success. But I don't understand. The explosion... The explosion was caused by a faulty valve in the experimental tank. A faulty valve? I'm glad. I was afraid that... We've was... brought great news for you, Mr. Dolan. You've been awarded the 1912 Nobel Prize for Physics. The Nobel Prize? Yes. The award reads for his discovery of the automatic regulators, which can be used in conjunction with gas accumulators for lighting lighthouses and light boys. Yes, the man who is responsible for the saving of countless lives through his invention of the automatic lighthouse beacon, who brought light to others, himself walked in darkness for the rest of his life. Gustav Dahlin died in 1937, and Sweden and the whole world mourned the loss of a truly great man. Today his beacons of clear, brilliant light guide ships in every sea, each beacon a shining monument to the memory of the man who gave his sight that they might see. Gustav Dahlin. And that's today's story by Dr. Phillips Thomas, research engineer of the Westinghouse Research Laboratories. Be with us again next week for another interesting story by Dr. Thomas on Adventures in Research.